My name's Lawrence Scott. I grew up around Territory, Oklahoma. What was your mother and father's name? Linda, Adair, and Joe Scott. There's four, four sisters and four brothers. When I was growing up, I used to help my grandma make a uh, lye soap. That's the only soap we had. Usually kept the far going. She's done all the mixing and stuff, carrying firewood and cook stove and stuff like that. We, we had to walk for a while. And the, one of them teachers had a, a truck. So she put sideboards on her. She went around picking up kids to school. In the wintertime, she'd put that, she'd put a cardboard box over there and that deal, put a little roof on it. So it wouldn't be cold to get, get, keep that wind off of us. But it was. That's what I grew up on, turkey. It was kind of hard, but they used to, they told us that we couldn't talk it. And we'd get in trouble if we did. And so there was no way we could communicate with the mother kids. So we just sort of kept to ourselves. And finally we got to learn where, where we could talk to them. And that's how about, I guess that's how we picked it up, I guess. Had to go to school, had to learn to keep up with them, I guess. We used to just make, take out a can of Prince Albert can, lock that one up there. Like we'd fold it up and find a wire rim, just put it between her, push it around with a stick. Or find a old tar laying around, we'd pick it up, push it up, put dirt in, make it, make it dust fly all over the place. <laughs> Had marble games, about it. We'd go out in the woods, just find something to do in the woods, play around, climb trees, find a good vine, we'd cut it, make a swing out of it. Bows and arrows, I guess. Just cut down a little hickory stick, fall down a little bit. Made on stick arrows, mm -hmm. bean flips, we just made a lot of them. My grandma, while we lived in an old house, a cherry tree, it used to be a long house, one family on one side, and we lived on one, on the other side. Mm -hmm. It was just two family house right there. Kind of log, log, uh, log house. Mm -hmm. and it was pretty crowded sleeping. In the summertime, we'd go throw mattresses on, out on the porch to sleep outside, or make hammocks out there between the trees. Back then, nobody bothered you. Well, they had a store down there, about, about a mile down the road. And that man bought in a, a TV. Everybody used to go to the store just to watch TV. Mm -hmm. And the next door neighbor, he finally got one. Everybody went over there. <laughs> Just go down there and watch TV till about 9, 10 o'clock. We had to go home. But Grandma kept us in line. There was no old limb around the house. We got in trouble. Just reached up there and grab, break off the switch. Wouldn't trim it or nothing. Well, if you couldn't catch it, but she'd go and nail you with the rock. She flipped me one time. Just took all the run. I'd done something. Broke a jar of pickles, I think it was. I said, just put it up, and I dropped it. And I just took off running. She just picked up a rock on the run. She didn't care how big it was, going through it. <laughs> South Saw Creek, about three miles down there. And my aunt's husband had a truck. We'd load up in the evening after, after he got off work, take us down there. We'd swim, swim, we'd swim around about. Mm, about eight o'clock at night, come home. But every other day he'd do that. But most time, me and my friend around the cherry tree, we'd, we'd just walk down there all day long, we'd swim around there. Then we'd start stealing horses. Uh -oh. <laughs> we used to ride the horses down there, go swimming, take them back to the field when we got through with them. <laughs> One time we got caught up. But, uh, Man who lived down the road from us. He had some plow horses. Every evening after school, we'd, we'd watch them feed them horses. When they get through feeding them, we'd leave. We'd go out there and catch them, ride them till dark. We know we'd done it for a long time. And finally, one day we was sneaking up to that little shed he had. There he was. <laughs> he said, No wonder my horses were tarred all the time because they didn't want to plow. <laughs> we'd go to the creek, Barren Creek. We'd go down there every Sunday, 
They used to work at the orchard down here. And that guy used to loan them the truck on Sundays. Pick everybody up that wants to go. We'd go down there. The women cook by the creek, and the men go down the creek fishing. And we'd they'd go about half a mile, maybe a mile down the creek, crawl dead and fish, bring them back, clean them, cook them. Have a big meal right there. We help crits crawl dead, swim while we're doing it. I didn't know how to use a gig, so it was just a raccoon technique. <laughs> we didn't have no rod and reels back then, just you know, cane poles, piece of stick and string. Mm -hmm. We'd go down to South Salt Creek, get in the creek, just take all of them, look for big rocks or under ledges, stick on them and fill four fish and pull them out, put them in sacks. Last time I did it, it was uh, about 20 years ago, I guess. And I spent the lake and I spilled with was pulling up big bass. And then one guy beside me said, look at that. I looked over there, a big old cottonmouth ball up on that rock. And we looked around, it was all the way around us. Well, we backed out of real quick. That's the last time I won't do it again. You can just eat groundhogs and raccoons. We run into one playing around out there. We're either cornered or we got in the hole, we just digging them out. We bring it home, mom clean them, and throw them in the oven. That's good stuff back then. How did y'all get to town music? We walk. Every Saturday, me and Grandma. They had a cafe down here. Ed Mullen was that owner. He cooked, made some chili, good chili. I knew I was going to eat chili that Saturday. <laughs> so we go in there and have our chili. We go to the store. Get what she needed, we take a walk in again. Okay. When she went to pick beans, I went, I went with her. I mean, so I'd pick enough you know, to make get by my bologna sandwich and pop. Then I'd disappear, go swimming some in the swimming hole down, her, down the creek. <laughs> I used to wear hand-me-downs, and my soles would come off, wear them out. My grandpa used to take a piece of bay noir, all the way around it. Put them back on, take off. The guy down the road used to have a big old uh, field. He'd plant garden. Everybody would go out there and help. And, you know, everything comes up. He used to share. My aunt, I guess you could say she was sort of a healer. Because mm -hmm. when somebody got sick, they used to come to her. She couldn't walk, go out in the woods, get it. She'd tell them what kind to get. I'd go, I'd go to the woods and look for what she told me to get. I'd get the roots or or the stems of it, or whatever she wanted me to get, and I'd get, take it back to her. And I asked her, this is it, that's what I needed. And every time she needed medicine from the woods, she'd set me out there, because I knew about what she was talking about. The only thing I remember, that, that mistletoe, it's, she used to tell you, it's good for high blood pressure. Just boil that mistletoe, Keep an ice bottle, just drink it like water, you know, just every time you get thirsty, drink it. So, she used to make me a gallon, I used to drink it all the time. Really? And I don't have no hot water pressure. But that's how come you get it at winter time, because there ain't no berries on it. There's a stump, got a hole in it, got water in it. And you put, you rub that water on your head, and it'll go gray headed. I don't know one place that's got that. But every time I see a stump water like this when I'm walking around, so I used to put it on my hair walking out of the woods.